بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد. The pillars of Islam are well known to us as Muslims, and even non-Muslims are aware of the the pillars of Islam, as it came in the as it came in, uh, in the Hadith of Jibril, where he came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the form of a Bedouin, and he said, "Ya Muhammad, akhbirni al Islam." He said, "Oh Muhammad, tell me about Islam." And the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered by saying, "Al Islam tish and tishro in la ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad rasulullah wa tukimu salat wa tutiyu zukat wa tsum Ramadan wa tajil bayd in istidada ilahi sabiyah." The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam answered by giving the five pillars of Islam. The first one is that we bear witness that there is no god worthy of worship except Allah, and that the Prophet is his last prophet and, and messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and to establish the five daily prayers. And to pay the zakat, the, the the alms tax, the charity, and to fast the holy month of Ramadan. And now we're in the last five days of Ramadan, 2012. Will Allah and Hamd may Allah accept it from us all? And to make the sacred pilgrimage to Mecca. This is the the this is according to the creed and the deeds of the believer. This is what Islam calls us to. It isn't what some of those other groups and cults claim to be Islam that they take from this book and they take from that book they practice nationalism to a particular culture or creed and they commit shirk most importantly that in the way they which they violate Islam is they associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they call to the worship of other than Allah they say Allah came in the form of the man of a man they say that Allah is the black man or this man or that man and these are all this is all extreme violations of islamic principles and extreme violation of islam and and in fact a type of cult satanic worship because there's no no none worthy of worship except the lord of our god and as a believer we must also strive to stay away from the major sins we must try to stay away from the major sins bidin la ta'ala the allah subhanahu the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said as was narrated in the hadith of abi ayub رضي الله تعالى عنه وسيد من جاء يعبد الله ولا يشرك به شيئا ويقيم الصلاة ويؤتي الزكاة ويجتنب القبائر كان له جنة رواه نسائي صحيح. In this hadith, which the Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم said that the person, the believer, should try to stay away from the major sins. اجتنب القبائر and the Prophet Sallallahu said, whoever, whoever worships Allah alone and does not associate a partner with him, establishes the prayer, meaning the five daily prayer, five times daily prayer, and pays the zakat, the alms tax, the, the charity on your wealth, and stays away from the major sin, yichtenibu kabair, Things like killing oneself, shirk, uh, fleeing the battlefield during uh, during jihad, riba meaning taking interest or usury, uh, zina the major sin, uh, adultery and fornication, homosexuality all of these are major sins. Whoever does that, then the Prophet said, "Lohu jannah," that for him is paradise. And this is a Sahih Hadith, Ruahu Nisai. In this hadith, we have many benefits, and it shows the believer that we must have amal, we must have practice. In Islam, Islam is not simply something we say on our tongue. And it is not something we just hold in our heart, but in fact, it's action as well. All of those things make up iman, they make up faith in Islam. And they're a part of the Islamic creed, and they're a part of iman, faith. That we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by deeds in the heart what we believe about Allah, our creed, and how we, uh, you know, we do those actions of worship like tawakkul, wa tawassul, and these kind of things, trusting in Allah, having hope and fear in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fear from His punishment, having humility before Him subhanahu wa ta'ala, all of those are actions of the heart, and they're a part of Iman, and they're a part of worship. And then there's those actions that are on the tongue, by bearing the shahada, uh, saying la ilaha illallah and dhikr on the tongue and then there are there there's those deeds 
which are on the limbs, doing actions like taking a, uh, removing something harmful from the road, paying charity, all of those things are the physical aspects of Hajj. All of those are physical aspects and physical aspects of Iman and Islam. So Islam calls us to all of those good things. In addition to that, we have to stay away from the major sins. We have to avoid shirk. We have to avoid kufr. We have to avoid bidah. We have to avoid all of those things. We can't form a new type of worship. We can't uh, do actions that were not legislated by Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But in fact, all of our ibadah, all of our ibadah is to Allah. And it's in accordance with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we have to strive our best to avoid any of those things which will take us away from that. And we have to realize Iman is on different levels. And there are different ways to remove those major sins. As the Prophet Sallallahu said in an authentic hadith collected in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, and this is the hadith of Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu who said, whoever sees a munkar, uh, something sinful from amongst you, then change it uh, with his hand. That's the highest level of iman. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ And if he's not able to do so, then with his, with his, his lisan, with his tongue, by speaking against the evil. فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَطِعْ And if he's not able to do so, then with his heart, and that is the weakest form of faith, meaning with your heart. How do you change a munkar with your heart? How do you change the kaba'ir or the sagair, any of the sins with your heart? You change it by hating it with your heart, by detesting that sin for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you see a munkar, you see someone doing uh, whatever, taking interest, or you see them cheating people in the marketplace, or you see them stealing from other people, or you see them hurting other people, then you hate that with your heart if you're unable to change it with your hand and you're unable to change it with your, your tongue and speak out against it. And so those are just some of the benefits that we gain from some of the ahadith of the Prophet wasallam, which refer to the avoiding the major sins and doing the wajibat, our, 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 our pillars of faith, uh, uh, bearing witness that there's no God worthy of worship and that Muhammad is his last prophet and messenger. And that means we have to stay away from those things which violate that. We can't just say the shahada on our tongue, but then we go to the grave of Sayyid Bedoui and uh, Sayyid Fatima, and we go to uh, Tijani, and we go to this tariqa and this tariqa, and we worship other than Allah. No, that, that violates Tawheed. So we have to practice those pillars and do those things which affirm those pillars and not violate them. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and protect us from kuli su'u wa makruh. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And we ask Allah tabarak wa ta'ala for ithbat wa ikhlas ala sunnat al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.